Umidy has introduced a new system in Umidy 6 for creating enemies and NPCs called the Behavior Graph. It sounds promising, but honestly, they haven't really explained how it works in a practical, beginner-friendly way. If you're completely new to behavior trees, you'll probably open the documentation, see a wall of theory, and lose interest almost immediately. Even though there are plenty of behavior tree tutorials out there, I kept running into the same issue when deciding if this system was right for my project. Most tutorials either go too deep into code without showing the big picture, or they just walk through generic node setups with no real context. So they're not that helpful when you're trying to build something real. That's why I've decided to break it down for you. In this video, I will give you a simple and clear introduction to Unity's behavior graph, so you actually understand how to use it, how to connect things properly, and how to get started the right way. Let's dive in. A behavior graph is like a tree, a roadmap that guides how enemies act. To read it, you just follow it from top to bottom and left to right. So a behavior tree is built from different types of nodes, and each node gives us one of three status. Success, failure, or running. If a node's still doing its thing, it's running. If it nails its task, it's success. And if something goes wrong, it's failure. Pretty straightforward. Now, there are two key types of nodes, action nodes and flow nodes. Action nodes are where the real stuff happens, like making an enemy navigate to a target or attack a player. When you right-click on your behavior graph and hit Add Option, you'll see a whole section for actions. For example, under the Navigation section, there's a handy action called Patrol that makes the enemy move between target points. Then we have Flow Nodes, which control how these actions play out. Let's break down two big ones, the Sequence Node and the Try and Order Node. Think of the Sequence Node like an AND gate. It only moves forward if every step succeeds. Let me paint a picture for you. Imagine an enemy with a behavior graph that says, check if the door is locked. If it's not, open the door, then move to the target. When we run this graph, it checks the door first. If it's unlocked, the node returns success to the sequence node, which then triggers the next action, opening the door. After that, it moves the enemy to the target. But what if the door is locked? The graph checks, sees the door is locked, and returns failure to the sequence node. Since the sequence node acts like an AND gate, it stops right there and doesn't bother with the other actions. That's how it ensures everything happens in order, or not at all. Now let's flip things with the try and order node, which is like the opposite. This node keeps trying its children until one returns success. Let's tweak our example. Say the enemy checks if the door is locked, and it is, so that returns failure. The try and order node doesn't give up. It moves to the next child, which checks if the enemy has a key, if they do, it returns success, and the try and order node stops there, passing success to the sequence node. From there, the sequence node triggers the actions to open the door and move to the target. But if the enemy doesn't have the key, the try and order node returns failure, and the sequence node halts the whole process. By combining action nodes with flow nodes like these, you can craft super complex enemy behaviors that feel dynamic and smart. It's like building a puzzle where every piece Every node works together to create something awesome. I hope this gave you a solid grasp of how behavior graphs work. In the next video, we'll dive deeper, explore more nodes, and even look at creating custom action. If you found this helpful, smash that like button, share it with your friends, and drop a comment to let me know what you think. It really helps get the YouTube algorithm to spread the word. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.